Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going on to a new chapter in my notes, chapter 10. So this is on the commutative algebra portion, I suppose you could say, of Weil's proof of Hermoth's theorem with some tweaks and improvements that came out after the original paper was published. Okay, so this is on the criteria for complete intersections used to prove the main theorem, the special case of the fontaine maser lifting conjecture. Okay, in other words, R equals T. Uh, so what are we doing here? We're going to discuss two results from commutative algebra used in the proof of Weil's main theorem. Okay, so for us, O is going to be a complete Noetherian local ring with maximal ideal M sub O and residue field K. So we're going to also suppose that we're given a commutative triangle of surjective homomorphisms of complete Noetherian local O algebras, that is O algebra homomorphisms. Now here's the triangle. So the first uh, algebra we'll call R, and there will be a surjective map phi from R to T. Then there'll be subject, surjective maps pi sub r and pi sub t out of r and t respectively to O, and this triangle will commute. We're also going to assume that t is a finite flat O algebra, meaning in this case that it's finitely generated and free as an O module. Um, so just so you know, like in Wiles proof, O here is just a discrete valuation ring. In fact, usually it's like some finite extension of the aladic integers or something. R is a deformation ring um, whose constructions we just finished, and t is some kind of Hecke algebra here. And then pi sub t here is going to be the homomorphism out of that Hecke algebra associated to some eigenform, right? So we know uh, we know that like normalized Hecke eigenforms, which are new forms, correspond bijectively to maps out of you know certain Hecke algebras uh, to the ring of coefficients of the new forms that are under consideration. Okay, so that's the setup here. All right. So definitions, uh, we're going to show two different criteria which give necessary and sufficient conditions to conclude that that the top map and that triangle phi is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings. So to that end, some definitions, we'll say that a local algebra which is finitely generated as an O module is a complete intersection over O if it's isomorphic to something of the form um, kind of O double bracket X1 through Xn, so kind of like power series and N variables over O mod F1 through Fn where F1 through Fn are of course in the power series ring. And the key here is you have to notice that the number of uh, functions we're modding out by is equal to the number of variables here. That's what it means to be a complete intersection essentially, okay? So gen number of generators equals numbers of relations. Uh, in that diagram above that commuting triangle, we're gonna let I sub R be the kernel of pi sub R. We're gonna let I sub T be the kernel of pi sub T. So this guy lives in R and this guy lives in T. Okay. And then we're going to define the congruence ideal of T to be the O ideal, eta sub T, which is pi T of the T annihilator of I T. So you take things in T that are killing the kernel of pi T, and you look at the image under pi T of those things. Okay. This is a very important ideal. Okay. So here's the first criterion. And today we're just going to go over what the criteria are. The first criterion is as follows. Uh, criterion one, suppose O is a complete discrete valuation ring and that eta sub T isn't trivial, then the O length of I sub R mod I sub R squared is greater than or equal to the O length of O mod eta sub T, okay, as modules here. And the equality holds if and only if phi is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings over O, okay. So, um, this is what we want to happen to get R equals T. So we'll end up checking things like this or like equality, it, it depends on the situation. Okay, so now, so what are we actually gonna do? Like, are we gonna directly apply criterion one here? It turns out our strategy is gonna involve something which on the face of it looks a little bit different, this theorem one here. Here's the theorem. It says in the diagram above, the map phi in that triangle is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings over O, which is what we want to happen. If and only if phi of the so-called R fitting ideal of I sub R is not contained in M sub O times T. We'll talk about fitting ideals in a, in a different talk, in a different video. Um, but we're gonna actually end up showing this. And then we're gonna discuss the relationship between theorem one and criteria. It's just that we would prefer to use this kind of, instead this avoids the Gorenstein-ness and all that, but there is a relationship between the two. We're gonna need criterion one still, okay? So here's the setup for criterion two. Um, we're gonna assume that the characteristic of K, our residue field is some prime P bigger than zero. And we're gonna let N be a natural number. Note that the ring O double bracket S1 through Sn is filtered by the ideals, which we'll call J sub M for M greater than or equal to zero, given by the following, 
So J sub M is omega sub M of S1, dot, 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 omega sub M of Sn, where in general, omega sub M of S is the polynomial one plus S to the P to the M minus one. For example, J sub zero is just the ideal generated by S1 through Sn. You can check this filtration pretty easily because the residue field has characteristic P. Okay, uh, this, what we're gonna wanna assume is that for each M positive, we have a commutative diagram of O algebras that looks like this. So we've got kind of our power series ring in the N variables S1 through Sn here. We want a map from that to some R sub M. And then we want a map from there called phi sub M to some T sub M for some O algebras R sub M and T sub M. Whatever these are, we want a map from R sub M to our original R and a map from T sub M to our original T. And then we want this bottom map commuting the square here to be the surjective map phi from that commuting triangle before, okay? So here's criterion two. Refer to the diagram above that I just got done talking about. And suppose that for each M, there is a surjection of O algebras from O double bracket X1 through Xn M up here, and there's a surjective map down to R sub M for each M, okay? Uh, suppose also that phi sub M is surjective. We like surjective arrows when we're dealing with wild stuff here. And then also suppose that the vertical arrows in the square induce isomorphisms, R sub M mod J zero R sub M with R and T sub M mod J zero T sub M with T. And then lastly, we're gonna wanna assume that J T sub M mod J sub M T sub M is finite flat over O double bracket S1 through Sn mod J sub M. Okay, so slightly confusing, but this is what we want, right? Uh, then phi from R to T is an isomorphism of complete intersection rings over O, which is kind of what we're after here. We're trying to prove R equals T in general, all right? Um, speaking of that, my other remark is the reason there are two criteria to begin with is because there are two cases to prove when you're trying to prove R equals T. There's the minimal case, which will require one of these criterion that you're trying, where you're trying to work with an empty set of primes. And then there's the non-minimal case where you actually have primes in your special auxiliary set. If you remember all this from like chapter one and chapter two of my notes, if you haven't, go back and rewatch those videos. Um, so that's why there are two different criteria. But the fact that they're both like proving the same type of thing, yet the proofs are completely independent of each other actually turns out to be noteworthy, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Okay, so uh, we'll get into some of this stuff next time. And so I'll see you then. And thanks for watching.